Welcome back to Brain vs. Heart. In this video, I'm going to answer the question, how often do INFPs daydream? Personally, for me, all the time. All the time. And I don't say that as an exaggeration. I am always daydreaming. Even if I'm working or editing, I pretend that my characters or my imaginary friends are sitting with me. We have a whole other arcing story that happens with someone's dragon. And I'm going to do something today. And it's going to... It's gonna be very weird and uncomfortable because this is usually stuff I keep to myself unless I decide to share my stories with the outside world in a more formal format. But I'm gonna let you in on conversations I have with my characters, the voices I do for them. It's super embarrassing because this is something that I don't share with the general public. I don't know if all INFPs do that and talk with their imaginary friends, but there's always some kind of dialogue going on in my head where I'm in a different world. And I'll try to explain a little bit of that. It's embarrassing. Oh my God. Okay. <sighs> Things I do for this stupid channel. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Sorry. Hold on. I'm trying to end myself up. <laughs> okay. 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 All right. Here we go. Jesus. Hey, Victor. Hey, what's up? I have something to talk to you about. What? I think I found out who took Midnight's eggs. Seriously? How? Come here. All right. The hidden camera that we set up for the trees, it shows these two people coming in and out at the same time towards the nest. They don't come out with anything. Midnight doesn't make any noise. There's no wing flaps, nothing. But it's always these two people. What are they doing? Three o'clock in the morning, so close to the nest. That's a good point, but... There's no evidence of anything. You can't just say those two people, I mean, for all you know, they're fucking. They must be very quiet. Yeah, that's what you do when you live with a whole bunch of people. Look, we built this tree village so people could have a place to go when they don't feel there's anywhere else to go. The upside of that is we get more workers, people to help out. The downside of that is you gotta see some of their dirty laundry being aired. Find it odd that you're talking to me about finding evidence and there being no evidence. You don't know that there's evidence for them doing that either. Yeah, but you're making the claim that they're doing something, but there's no evidence for it. I just don't believe it. I'm just saying that maybe they could be, maybe they're not. There's no evidence for either, and we can't just go accusing people. I know that, you're right, and I know that. Okay, maybe I am being paranoid. I just don't want dragon eggs to fall into the wrong hands, beside their Javon's dragon eggs. I thought you said that dragons don't belong to anyone. They don't- you know what What's I up, mean. you guys? Hey, Nothing. Sarah. Okay, that's not suspicious at all. What's going on? Something I should know about? Between you people? What? No! Ew! Stop! Ew. Excuse me, I'm fucking hot. Okay. Full of thyself much? Alright, see you guys later. I got stuff to do. See you later, Victor. So, you wanna go out today? It's raining. So what? We can go to the park. I need to get out of here. Like, if I keep staring at the same thing for another three hours, I'm gonna go insane. What's wrong? I'm... I'm fine. Obviously you're not. Look, we've been best friends for a very long time, so please don't play that crap with me. Tell me. It's okay. What is it? Is it about me? No, it's not about you. Then what is it? It's gonna sound like I'm complaining, so it's nothing you haven't heard before. Is it about living here? Yeah. Listen, like I told you before, like Ducky also told you, this is just temporary. You're the one who always made us feel positive about things. So if you know you're not going to stay here forever, then why are you sad about it? Because it's annoying and sometimes I feel overwhelmed because there's just people all over the place. I know human beings, right? What are we going to do? Would you stop? Alexa, say it with me. I am calm. <laughs> I'm not calm, though. Say it anyway. I am calm. I will move soon. I will move soon. I'll have lots of space and never have to see any humans ever again. <laughs> I... What? I'll have lots of space and I'll be happy for the rest of my life. And I'm being a little bit of a spoiled brat. I'm not saying that. But you are, though. How am I a spoiled brat for wanting space? Look around you. Look outside. Yes, ignore the meth addicts, okay? <laughs> Ignore, ignore the drunk people screaming at the top of their lungs at 2 a.m. in the morning. Ignore your dogs 
jumping up mid pits to run towards the gate because someone is walking by. Just all of those things. Just do what you usually do. And those fraba. Keep in your mind that all of these things are things you're going to get away from. Not things you're going to get stuck with. If you keep on thinking about how your situation is now and not how it's going to be, it is going to drive you insane. Besides, the greatest thing of all is that you don't live with your parents anymore. Remember what it was like living with your mom? That was eternal hell. I mean, call me crazy, but I'd say that this situation, as uncomfortable as it is, is still a hundred times better than that one. You're right, Sarah. You're right. How did you get so freaking wise, man? You taught me all of that, stupid. Like, you're great at encouraging other people, but you get stupid when it comes to doing it yourself. Yeah, I know. Thank you, Sarah. It means a lot. Okay, I don't want to talk about this anymore. Let's go out. I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. We're going out. We haven't spent time together, just us alone, for a while. So, I'm taking you out. I mean, I'd like to go out with you, but it's raining, though? And it's not raining acid. Come on. Alright, just, just give me two minutes. Two minutes. I promise, two minutes. And see, that's my ESTJ friend, Sarah. This is what I go through in my head. There's a lot more action. We're always surrounded by nature. This is what I'm doing like 99% of the time. Alexa! You talking to me or the machine? You! Who are you talking to? Nobody. I'm coming. Jesus. Well, come faster. That's what he said. Really? Really? <laughs> Real mature. And that's what goes on in my head most of the time. It's usually a lot more than that. There's bad guys. There's times when I fail. Sometimes in certain dimensions, we have certain powers. Guys, it's so much fun. Oh my God. My whole, okay. Trying to calm down, sorry. <laughs> Trying to go deep in there. But uh, that's, that's, that's my brain. My brain is weird. Also, I do this thing where... Like, certain objects will have, like, dragon and horse forms. I sound batshit crazy. Like, in my mind, it's fine. But telling this to other people who are not kids, I sound like a lunatic. Which is why we usually keep it to ourselves. And I guess that's why people usually say that we're better writers. Because all the crazy crap that happens in stories and movies, INFPs are good at writing that. But it also is going on in my head. Like, I have nightmares, and when I get up from having nightmares, I'm like, oh my god, that's another creepy pasta I can write. This is so freaking cool. Like, it's actually exciting. We also have very vivid dreams. Um, Like, last night, I literally got up with a migraine because the entire time I had a string of dreams that were continuations from other dreams I had a year ago, melded with new dreams. And some of the dreams, as an example, are us trying to get away from some place that had us captured meet a whole bunch of people and we're literally on the side of a mountain hugging the mountain and using our fingers to grip the rock so we don't fall backwards into the precipice and down the mountain and kill ourselves so we're trying to sideline on this very thin ledge and i'm tensing my body concentrating on not falling and this was the same obstacle course i went on a year ago in another dream which was basically the same dream but now it was pilled with dreams like wild dogs trying to chase me on a college campus i climbed up the pillar i was on a thin ledge and they were trying to get me and even though all these other people were running by they were still trying to eat me and i had to be holding up my legs and alternating them so the dogs wouldn't jump up and get them like i didn't i don't feel like i slept last night <laughs> i don't feel like i slept i got up with a migraine because my body was so tense while i was dreaming and i'm like you know what I have to make a conscious decision to go back and dream something nice. And I don't know if other INFPs can do this, but I have this thing where I can go to sleep, and if I really concentrate, I can make myself dream something I want. And I was able to do that last night after I got up from that migraine. So INFPs are very... We're nuts. We're, we're probably the kind of people that you don't want having dementia because it would be really bad for us. We would literally see things like, oh my god, the Tyrannosaurus Rex is trying to come after me and like bathe me with its feet and all this weird stuff. Like, I just feel so bad. Like, sometimes I hear some of the crazy old people talk about that and I'm thinking to myself, I wonder if they were somebody with a great imagination and now something that was so beautiful that could be used for such creativity and inspiration is now like their worst weapon. It's like now literally turned against them because it is making them sick. And it's really sad to think about that. But my imagination is 
basically my time machine, my space traveling vehicle, my dimension hopping TARDIS. I don't know what you'd call it. It's wonderful. I love having it. It's overwhelming at times, but I never feel bored and I never feel alone. I don't like being with outside people, but inside my head with my friends and my characters and nature, my dragons, it's the best thing in the world. It's a great escape when I'm someplace where I can't physically escape. All right. Now that I sound like a freaking lunatic, uh, I'm going to leave the video there.